Welcome to my video on the Transit Custom 2016 2.2 .2 TDCI. Uh, I am changing um, CV boot uh, with a flexible boot, um, bow cast DC, let's just check, yeah, DBC 300, this one. There's a few that fit the Transit, you know, they're very uh universal in that respect so uh that's kind of the right one you don't want it too big and you don't want it too small there's plenty of give uh in that joint so that's what's going on uh i've done the driver side one already i did intend to change the discs but i've kind of run out of time but i have fitted new pads the discs aren't that bad i was just being fussy uh i normally you know while i'm in there sketch but i've literally i had an issue putting the driver's side front back together in that the drive shaft, the drive shaft, there's an intermediate shaft sits in the middle. It came too far out of this joint and I couldn't get it back in on the vehicle. So cut a long story short, I took the intermediate shaft out, which is quite easy. There's two bolts, I think they're 13 mil and there's a bearing and a little carrier that bolts it on the shaft runs through the minute you undo that and you can gently lever the shaft out of the gearbox you don't get a lot of oil fall out of there so it's above the oil level of the gearbox but i took the whole lot out and assembled it back in on the ground and basically i had to give them a bit of a whack with a mallet to get them to lock back in and once they pop back in I put the boot back on and sealed everything up and put it back in the van. Passenger side front, I am at the stage where it's all stripped down and I am just, I've just put the ball joint splitter in for the bottom ball joint. I've whacked that in and I'm gonna apply a bit of heat to it. It hasn't opened up yet. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat to it and hopefully uh, it might pop off. Let's go and have a look. Right, you'll see, uh, I've taken out the track rod end from there. Uh, obviously, caliper is off. Uh, this is the offending article. You can see where the boot has split open. Um, and I have got the lower bolt off and I have wedged my splitter in there and I'm about to apply a little bit of heat down here which I'm going to try and do now with said blow to it. the trick took a bit of heat sorry uh, where am I trying to show you there you can see now right you can see now that the ball joint is now loose so I'm gonna now remove that lift it out and uh, start to remove the the shaft that will then require a tap on here just to push it through. Let me line it up and we'll show you the next step. Right, put the nut back on the end of the shaft and then take your hammer and basically you want to
so that you've pushed, started to push the shaft out through the tensor. Next step after pushing the shaft through there and tapping it back in with a hammer is to push down on the lower arm, push down nice and hard and then releasing it from the ball joint. The shaft, um, I was very careful with this one because I didn't want to pull it out of its joint in here and you can tell whether you're in there or not because when you push it in and out there's lots of free movement in and out another giveaway will be particularly with the other side the end of this housing here on the back of the shaft if when the shaft is in position if this is protruding beyond the end of the lower arm you know you're not bedded inside your shaft uh, and then you'll like I say it's another 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 ball game but still so that's where we're at with that I'm now going to cut away the old boot and get ready to assemble the new one fundamentally the tools I've used to get this job underway um, is a, a 36 mil socket that's for your center hub 24 mil socket for the lower ball joint and a 16 mil socket for the track rod end and also your bolts for your brake caliper as well right i've now cut away the old boot with a stanley knife uh, and removed that that's the old one there came out in two pieces uh, the clip that was around it I used uh, a small grinder on there to break that open uh, because they don't appear to have any they don't have a join on them uh, it's a pressure a pressure fit from original factory but anyway that's done now so now I'm gonna line up the boot on the cone to slide it over now in your boot kit that's the uh, bow cast um, what do we say it was the DBC 300 comes a flexible boot a sachet of grease and it comes with a couple of clips um, make your own decision about these clips I'm gonna I use cable ties on the other side uh, and doubled up on them as well because I just couldn't get it tight enough uh, in my opinion and the worst thing is if that boots not on there tight back back and front then when you're on full lock it's going to be tempted to want to pull it off of uh, the disc side but anyway here's your suppository so using that now you've got a small end and you've got a big end this end is what you're going to be pushing over the hub from the outside and then in effect sliding the whole boot over onto the drive shaft. So it's important that you put it on the right way round. Do not put it on large side first. You wanna go that side first. You might find that it will fold in on itself or whatever, but you can correct that once it's on the vehicle. So now the thing to do is to grease this up really, really well, and then we'll attempt the slide on. This is a really messy job. Um, you've got your cone. Uh, remember, I've put a load of grease on here. Might be worth putting an extra pair of gloves on, because as soon as you get that on there, your hands are gonna be covered in grease, and if you've got a decent pair of gloves on underneath, they're gonna be pretty much useless. Right. There's your boot. So bearing in mind that the fat end, the larger end of your cone is going to be going over the hub. Uh, and so you want this small end to go on first. Like I say, you might find out that it will fold back in on itself or whatever, but you can correct that later on. So basically it's hard to believe that that tiny little gap there is going to go to that size there, but it does. Right, here we go. So basically, slide it on. If it's really cold, you might want 
to warm it up a bit. So if the boot goes inside out, don't worry about it too much. And it's sprung back up to the top again. Right, okay. Right, let's have another go. Making sure you've got plenty of grease around there. to go on the floor. Hang on. What a nightmare. amongst yourselves for a minute. My hands are so slippy, I can't get a grip. I've only done it. Right, it's there. So now we're gonna fit it over the coupling. Jesus. Then slide your cone over your coupling, push it right over, and then slide that boot back off, which I'm gonna do now, but I can't hold the phone at the same time. That's what it looks like when you've dropped it on. Now I've gotta turn it back inside out, because I think it's gone inside out. Mine was well and truly inside out, but there you go. That's what it should look like. Just take your time with it. It's so tricky because it's greasy and slippery, etc. But that's basically the boot sitting in position. What I've now got to do is I'm gonna put my sachet of grease, take this back off, it's very easily done. Put my sachet of grease in there, and then I'm gonna clip it up, and decide whether or not to use the clips or cable ties. Whew. Tell you what. If childbirth or anything like that, then my word. Whew. Okay, I've added the grease and I've decided to go with cable ties. I've put two on the back and one in there on the front. Now the next job is going to be to line the shaft up and start to get the lower arm back onto that ball joint, which is basically you'll locate your shaft in 
making sure that you're on the right splines. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on that as well. Now my shaft, uh, you can tell it's in the cut in the van all right, because you can move it backwards and forwards nice and freely. When they tend to come out of that joint, they go tight, so you'll know. But this one's looking good. And also, always, if you line it up with your lower arm here, and look at the back of the boss there by the spline, they should be well and truly reset. Mine yesterday on the other side was out here because it wasn't bedded inside that joint. Right, I'm gonna do that now and I'll show you when I get that back together. So basically, this has got to go back through there, make sure it's all lined up and then you'll have to apply some pressure on the lower arm to get it to drop low enough to hook over that ball joint. Whew. Okay, we're all bolted up nice and tight. Uh, lower arm, uh, that's in. If you have problems getting it tight enough so that it doesn't spin on the nut, I used a little trolley jack underneath here with a piece of wood, jacked it up. That sends it all nice and tight and then you can finish off tightening it all up. Had a little wipe down inside. Uh, the hub nut, once you've done that up, put your castle nut on or your castle cap which is to stop it spinning. And of course, I'm gonna put the split pin in in a moment. I used a piece of wood uh, in between the studs like so uh, to tighten mine up. Um, it's just one way of doing it. There are others. And the track rod end, all done as well. And let's have a quick look at the other side while I'm at it. Yeah, that's the other one done as well. Like I say, I was planning to change the discs and pads, but I've run out of time on this one. So I'm going to put new pads in and uh, I'll leave the discs for another time. But if you do the discs, um, basically you've got one, two, three, four, five bolts there. You've also got their 13 mil and then you've got one, two, three, four, five in the center. They're T Torx T50s. You need the long version of those. So basically what you would do is you would undo this, take your nut off again, tap gently either on a piece of wood or use a mallet, tap your shaft through just so it's a little bit free, take out your torque screws, and then that will allow you to knock the disc off. And then when you're on the ground, um, you've got to undo these ones to uh, separate the disc from the hub. Now you could, it is a, if you're locking the disc off beforehand, these can be really tight to get out. So if you want to, before you take the disc off the car or van, then crack these off a little bit, just so that half the work's done for you when you get it on the floor. But the discs are another job. I'm gonna have a little clean up in the caliper, put a bit of grease on the sliders, and uh, finish off putting it all back together. Okay, that's everything fixed back in. Uh, I've gone with the new pads. I'll do the discs at a later date. Change the pads again. Uh, Given the caliper a little clean up. Your wear sensor, you've got a flat side and a proud side. The proud side goes in facing the disc. Simple as that. Um, if, uh, going back a little bit, if you have a problem when you're lining up lowering this bar to get your lower ball joint in. I used a breaker bar in that hole there and pushed down on it, gave me just enough leverage to do the job. Uh, other than that, make sure that your brake pipe isn't twisted when you put your caliper back on. Um, and basically, yep, split pins back in there now, that's all talked up. Um, everything, that they weren't removed anyway and we're all good in there. So I'm just gonna pop the wheel back on and that's fundamentally it for CV joints.